Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm here for my weekly update. It's Monday, November 27th, I believe. And I survived Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, it was hot and busy and lots of baking, lots of family, lots of time with, you know, our, my family, lots of time with extended family. Um, but it was good. I got a little bit of stitching in and, in and amongst all the craziness. So I guess we'll get into it because now it's officially the Christmas season. So I'm listening to Christmas music. I put my wreath on the door. We may do outside Christmas lights next weekend. Um, and I'll, like December on Friday on the 1st, I'll get out my advent calendar, which is a cross stitch advent calendar. Um... I don't think I've showed that to you on here. Let me go get it. Okay, um, since I started filming floss tube videos in January, I don't know that I would have shared this. Maybe I shared it when I put it away, but um, I kind of doubt it. So this is my cross-stitch advent calendar that I made several years ago. It was a kit, I believe, by Dimensions called Oh Holy Night. It's fairly large. Um, it came with 14 count antique white Ada and that's what I used. Um, so it's pretty cute. I followed pretty much exactly all the kit asked for. It told me to put these little beads here for hanging the, um, the little ornaments every day. And it works, but it's not ideal. Like a little hook probably would would have been better. But what I do is I'll um, they had perforated a uh, plastic canvas for 14 count plastic canvas with all these little like all these little ornaments that you can put up every day. You know the shepherds and the animals and the angels. Little angels. So there's all the different characters for the nativity. Here's a wise man and a, a, a bird. <coughs> there's baby Jesus. Um, there's the town of Be Bethlehem. So they're really cute. Really cute. <coughs> the thing that they, they ask you to do <coughs> excuse me is they, they had you glue, um, hot glue, like, some thread on the back to make a little hanger. <clears throat> and they're like, just hang it on here, but it, it doesn't really work. It would just fall off. So what I've been doing for the past, you know, five, ten, I don't know, not ten years, probably eight years maybe. I can't do this with one hand. Is I'll grab the bead... And then I give it a twist, a double twist, and so it's like hook, hooked on there with a little, a wrap, like wrapped around the bead a little bit. And then when you take it off again, you have to undo it and then take it off at the end of December. <clears throat> so that's pretty cute. It came with um, felt that I backed it with. And I believe I bought this dowel and painted it white and added the ribbon to hang it up. I don't think it came with that. But this is, I just hang it, whoops. I hang it on the wall where my um, wedding sampler usually goes. I'll take the wedding sampler down for the Christmas season and put this up instead in the hallway. And lately, since now that I have kids, they, I think, I don't know if they were... I don't remember when I did this, but, um, oh, that's when I would have shared it with you during my whip parade. I thought I remembered sharing this at some point, so I think I shared it during my whip parade, but anyways, there's that. Um, my kids will help me pick out which character they want on each day, so it can get a little weird. It's not, like, in order. <laughs> they'll have certain ones will pick all the animals, or they'll pick all the the people, or they'll pick all the you know, things with the stars because it's got their favorite color, it's yellow, or, you know, like, every year it's different, and it's kind of fun. So, we do that, and 
I fully finished my secret stitch on Friday because I needed to gift it on Saturday, so nothing like the last minute. <laughs> so this is the, this is what I had been making. This is Stitch Rovia's Joy. You can find it on their site. I guess I got this off of Etsy. So um, last year, I bought this last year and was working on it last November, I think, because um, I got this to do for my mom. Her name, and I explained this in my little clip I made, her name is Joy, and she gets lots of Christmas stuff, but I, I changed it to be her favorite colors. And so this is what the original one looks like, and it's very Christmas colors, and I kept the design the same, and I just changed it to be like a tealy blue color for the main main joy in the birds and the flowers and then everything else I kind of altered a little bit to match the cool nature of that blue that I chose so I will put in pictures of my progress I didn't start taking progress pictures until I started working on it again recently the past few months so um, you won't see it from the very beginning I worked on it a a chunk of it last year and then put it away for a few months so when I picked it up again recently I started taking a picture every month or every week sorry every Monday I would take a picture um, and then and then I have a little clip that I filmed on Friday afternoon with it finished so you can see it in I, f I framed it in a hoop but I wrapped it with ribbon and so You'll see that here. Hi, this is a quick update to show you the results of my fully finished secret stitch. You will have just seen um, a series of pictures from when I started taking note of the pictures and once a week roughly until it's finished. So here it is, fully finished and ready to give. This is for my mom. Her name is Joy. And she has, she receives a lot of joy stuff at Christmas time to decorate with and buys a lot of joy decorations. And why not? That would be fine. This is a pattern by Stitch Rovia. I got it um, in their shop last year during one of the sales that they had. And it is charted to be in Christmas colors because most people think of this as a Christmas word. However, I wanted to make it for my mom and something that she could hang up year round. So her favorite color is blue and kind of a tealy blue color. So I thought I would make it that. So I made, changed all the colors to match the bluish palette that I had picked. So all of the other colors are changed also to more cool shades of all those colors. Um, it's, this is 28 count white Monaco from Charles Craft, and it's one over one with DMC. This flower was stitched probably four, or six, four to six times when I was doing the color conversion um, before I was happy with the results, and it kind of has like a pansy look to it now. Um, in order to finish this, I wrapped a wooden hoop in some some satin ribbon and then covered the back in felt so she can hang it up or prop it up on like a plate stand or however she wants to 
display that, but it can be up year round because it is for her and not for Christmas. So she had recently, since I've been doing the Joyful World stitch along pieces or the Joyful World, yeah, um, the monthly pieces on 28 count one over one and I recently did the Heaven and Earth Designs You Make My Heart Melt 28 count one over one and she was very um, intrigued by how little and dainty those stitches were. That's why I thought, well, I need to make her something on 28 count one over one. So this is when I saw this um, pattern in the Stitch Rovia website last year, I thought, let's do it. So I started it then and did my color conversion then last year while our kitchen was being remodeled and we were, I was stuck upstairs in my daughter's room with the door closed to try to you know, for the two of us to be in there without too much noise and dust, and that's when I worked out the color conversion, and I got this top little chunk done with almost all the colors put in just to kind of see how they looked together. Then I put it away for a while and brought it out again recently to finish up for her birthday. So we'll be giving this to her tomorrow. So I had to do, I, I finished it, fully finished it today, and then um, I'll wrap it up now now that I've shared it with you. So I thought it turned out pretty cute. So um, if anyone is interested in my color conversion, let me know and I can um, post it in the comments, in the description box or something. Um, it's a little bit convoluted. Not every color is exactly the, the same in all places on the on the chart. So there's some some colors like in the flowers where they should have been some of these pinky colors, but I made the I wanted the flowers to be blue as well. So um I have like colors for the berries, colors for the flowers, colors for the words and, you know, so things are not exactly evenly um translated in the color conversion. But if you would like it, I can share that with you. Um, I was just going to say something. Oh, this is a six inch, a six inch wooden hoop. So when you do this um, on 28 count, it's, it can fit nicely in a six inch hoop. So there's that. So hopefully you enjoyed that and it was worth the wait. Um, my mom enjoyed it. She really liked it. And it's fun that it's blue so she can have it up all the time and not just at Christmas time because it's for her and not for the joy of Christmas season. So the, my main project this week was, oh yeah, I finished, was that this week? I finished those handkerchiefs and I made a, I filmed a how to, how to use waste canvas tutorial. I have not edited it yet so that should be up sometime this week. Hopefully I'll get to the editing. During the crazy week, I didn't have time to edit it, but I did film my process for using Waste Canvas while I made my second handkerchief. So those are in the mail and the, the tutorial has been filmed. Once those were done, I got out Falling Leaves, which was, was a free chart that DMC had put out on their website, but I don't believe it's um, available anymore. Um, and this is the way it is on the pattern. Here's how far I got, which is really fun. I don't know if it's really focusing too well, but it did turn out. I like, there is some, um, variation with the colored cotton. This is antique gold and this is eat your greens. And... I thought it was funny, the, the chart is a different orientation than the finished picture they put over here. Cause like this leaf, I think is this leaf. So the chart should be like, I think it's just upside down. Yeah, so this is, this is this, the orientation the finished product should be if you're using the chart the way they printed it. <laughs> So I guess it doesn't really matter. When I finish this, I will, um, this is the way I stitched it. When I finish this, I guess I can just pick which way I want it to go. 
I'm not really sure if I will um, frame it. I think I it's, it might be like two by two inches when it's done. So if I can find a tiny little frame, I'll probably just frame it and put it up with my autumn decor, which is not very much, but it's super cute. Here's my little stork scissors as a comparison. <laughs> Itty bitty. These are those little, you know, little embroidery scissors, and that's how big it is. One of them fits in there. It's been really fun. I had to find a tiny, sharp needle um, because even a 28 tapestry needle was too dull and fat to, like, run any, any threads under the stitches because the stitches were so tiny. This is 40 count silk gauze, and I was using one strand. So the back was one strand half stitch. So the back was is literally, it's it's hard to tell, but the back is one, one up and down little line for each stitch. Like a cross stitch, you'll have two up and down lines because you'll do both legs of it. Anyways, so it, it was, it's pretty much impossible to run any any needle under those stitches with a regular tapestry needle. So I found a really sharp, um, I don't know if this is it. Yeah, I think this is it. A really sharp, um, where is it? Needle with a tiny little eye to use. And let's see if I can compare this with my size 28. So the 28, DMC 28 is shorter than the needle I found, but the needle I'm using is sharper. So this short one is a 28, and see how the eye is, is bigger? Let's see if I can get both eyes pointed the same direction. Um, but I needed the sharpness and skinniness of the other one. I think it might be a short beading needle, um, but that's what I was using for my 40 count gauze. And I think I probably have a, a needle like that for the 40 count even weave that I'm doing a, a heaven and earth designs with too because of the same problem of being able to run threads under and like on a full coverage design I could probably try a waste knot method which I've never tried before I like running my thread under my backs of my stitches but for this since it's see-through you really can't do waste knots you have to so you can literally see through it <laughs> That was, that's hard. It was kind of hard to use this because it's so see-through. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> very interesting to work with. So thanks, Shelly, for giving me this just to play with. Um, it's been fun. I will probably finish, not work on it anymore this year because I want to use it for a year of whips. So it, it goes pretty fast. I only had a few days and short times in a few days to work on this, and I got two little leaves done. So <clears throat> there's like two and a half more leaves and then the swirls. So if I give this another week, it'll, it'll probably get done in a week. So I'll save this for 2018 and count it for a year of whips. So I have to finish that sometime after 2000, uh, January 18th. Any time after that is fine. So, <clears throat> because it was Thanksgiving and we had lots of times with family, I was able to bring my travel stitching along a lot of places. So I got to work on my December by the Snowflower Diaries, The Joyful World. This is what it looked like last time. And here it is now. So once I added the red, it really made it Christmassy. <laughs> so you'll see this looks a little funny over here, and I'm still not sure if I want to keep it, but I don't have Otter Creek, and that's the color they called for for all of these leaves, the needles and these leaves. It was all supposed to be Otter Creek, and I don't have Otter Creek. And I ran into that, I think, in... Um, in November also and so on November what I chose to do is I did the stems in the dark green and I did the little leaves in the blue green 
and it works okay on here because there's lots of other blue and it, it looked okay. With this one, I wasn't sure how to split up the two colors and I thought, well, maybe I'll do some of the, the base leaves in the dark green and the blue in these other ones. And I tried that and I on this one and I didn't like it. It looked weird being blue. So I was gonna wait and maybe find a darker shade of this green and just have a lighter shade here. And and then my daughter was like, why don't you use this color? And she saw my little box of um, threads and was looking at some of the other colors. And that was like, well, that's kind of a good idea. I, so I ended up trying to use the darker portions of grape leaf, which I already had in that box. And it looks a little bit darker in the video than it does in real life this 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 dark color it looks okay to me I, I'm still not sure if it's too much of a contrast or if I should take out the dark leaves and do it all in grape leaf the dark needles and just leave these leaves the way they are and do all of these in grape leaf or I don't know if you have an idea let me know because it does look higher contrast between the colors on the video than it does in real life. But, I don't know, part of me just wants to leave it because it's already done and I don't want to redo it again. So, um, we'll see. <laughs> so that's how far I got in that. It's not done yet. And I will continue to work on it in the car. School is back in session now so I can um, take it with me in the valet line, the school pickup line. I may or may not finish it before December 1st, before Friday, but um, it won't be too much longer after that. So, pretty good progress. I also worked on my temperature garden yesterday. And here's what it looked like last time. Okay. Here it is now. And oh, what do we see here? <laughs> Is it summer again? No, it's just Thanksgiving in Southern California. This bright, happy petal over here is 92 degrees. That was Thanksgiving day, it was 92. These weeks felt like fall. They felt lovely and gorgeous and like, yes, we finally have fall weather. And then it does that the week of Thanksgiving. I don't know. The best time of year, well, maybe not. This one, it does look pretty cool, but a lot of times what I'll say is the best time of year to live in Southern California is in February, because when everyone else is knee deep in snow and they're sick of it, spring is starting. So, but in the fall and Thanksgiving and Christmas time, it's kind of like, it's a little frustrating because fall is just refuses to show up until all of the holidays are over and then it's it's just weird. For example, today it feels like fall. It rained this morning and there's lots of leaves on the ground so it's really fun. Um, but when you're starting to listen to Christmas music and it's just starting to feel like fall and it's still sunny all the time and it's just a little weird. And so I, I'm a strict believer in no Christmas music until the day after Thanksgiving. Um, but I do start it immediately and for sure that we're starting this Christmas music right now because I want to actually feel like it's Christmas and that's sometimes the only indicator in my life that it's Christmas season is the music I'm listening to because the weather does not feel like Christmas at all. And decorations in the stores do and if you finally get your house decorated it starts to feel like it but yeah Just, you're driving around town it's like well at least the Christmas music is letting me know yes it's Christmas season because it's sunny and there's still green leaves on the trees there's a lot of colorful leaves but it's de definitely different than Christmas and or fall in Oregon and I'm sure fall elsewhere is even colder and so enjoy it if you have it. <laughs> it's a weird time of year to be in Southern California. Um, 
I also got a little bit done on my Greetings from the Parks by the Frosted Pumpkin. Not that much, again, just other things I was doing. So here's it, I, I probably show, showed you what it was last time. Here's what it is now. Um, I finished this tan color over here in the sand and then did this color, her skin color, which is also the sand, the rest of the sand. So I started filling in the rest of that, this color here and then the rest of the sand. And then the rest of this will be that color also, except for this little guy. So, um, there is that. Still have not started these, this third clue, but they are really cute. Like, I still haven't printed them out either. They're Grand Canyon and Yosemite, which are two really fun ones. And the thing that I like the most about those ones, let's see, make sure this is bright enough for you. The things I like most about the new ones is they're not just, the, the rangers are not just standing there, they're doing stuff. Like I think the Grand Canyon one, they're riding a donkey. And the Yosemite one, the ranger is in a boat or something. So that's cute. So I'm, I'm excited to, to do those, but I do want to finish these two postcards first. This will definitely be a Year of Whips piece too because I, there's no way I am finishing this before um, January 18th. It, I'm just plugging away too slowly. And that's okay because I could use another easy finish next year. So I'll just keep chipping away at this on the weekends. Um, in, to, in 2018, I'm planning to do the Frosted Pumpkin Storytime Sampler in on the weekends. So this might turn into a travel piece um, starting in January. But mean, meanwhile, I'll keep it as a weekend piece throughout December. Um, so that's done. So today... I was planning to start my Heirloom Nativity Sampler by Victoria Sampler. Never done a Victoria Sampler before. Really like this one. It'll get me in the mood for Christmas. And then I was a moron. And I was going to start it. I had not prepared my fabric. I had not prepared the color conversion. I was not ready to start it. Saturday, my mom was, my family was visiting, and my mom really likes this one too. So I thought, I was sitting here stitching and, and visiting and thought, oh, it would be really fun if she could see me start this. So I went to go get it and miscalculated my measurements and cut my fabric wrong. And can't use it. So, I didn't notice it until she's like, oh, I would have thought it would be shorter, longer than that. And then I was like, yep, yeah, it should be. <laughs> I think I just calculated it wrong. I think I, I was dividing the stitch count by 32 instead of 16, because I'll be doing this over too. Rookie mistake. Even though I am, I've been stitching for 30 years, still can make rookie mistakes. So... Word to the wise, if you have not completely prepared your new start, do not start a new start with company. When you're visiting, when you're distracted, get everything, get your fabric cut when you're alone. <laughs> Just telling y'all. So I went online and I found another piece of silver linen that was what I was using before. It's It calls for smoky pearl like cashel or something, um, 28 count. I was using 32 count silver and it's not available anymore, but I found another piece on eBay and the piece I was using was probably one I bought in the store with a coupon like ages ago and super cheap. So forked out more money to get another piece, but it's coming. Should be here the end of the week, so sometime in December I can hopefully start that. So then, the question is, what do I start, or what do I work on this week? Now that my plan is shot. 
Um, I considered, I have several options, so maybe you guys can vote and we'll see if I go with what you say or with just my gut or both. So far, I don't know. My first option would be my Chatelaine. Dawn Frosty X Stitch recommended I start this because um, it's not actually Christmassy. It's still November. Um, it's not wintry yet, so part of me wants to hold off and wait and work on this again in like January or February because that's when it's actually cold here. But this could get some love this week. Haven't decided yet. So I might work on my Chatelaine. In case I do, I'll show you where I'm at. This is the Winter Wonder Winter Wonderland band sampler. And this is how far I am on that. This is ice blue um Belfast linen, which is a, a recommended fabric by the European Cross Stitch. There's lots of beads. And this is Silk Lame braid, which sparkles just a tiny bit. And this is a Gloriana silk, which is also all around here. Um, I recharted the words to be my to be a, a Bible verse instead of the words. My garden is my winter wonderland because that is not true. <laughs> um, so this might come out this week, even just a little bit. I might just do a little bit on it. Um, my other thought was something that I had kind of been wanting to work on for a while. Um, but haven't had a chance because I've been working on Royal Holiday. So all the, every time I <clears throat> thought I could work on it, I was, well, Royal Holiday is still a good ways off. So I need to get her some love. So I never brought this one back out again this year. So I might work on this one. It's got a little bit more of an autumnal feel to me too than winter like this one has. And that is the Stitcher's Retreat, um, which is a freebie on the Heaven and Earth Designs website. And I am doing a cropped version, extreme cross country. I'll probably do nativity um, next month for a week. But this, this is the one I'm thinking of doing this week. And this is how far I have on it um, so far, extreme cross country. So you can see the start of the first girl right there. And then this is the top of the head of the other girl. So if I could get some, some done on her, that would be really fun. Then you could see them both. You could see them both sitting there. Um, this is 28 count, rose, monaco. I'm doing it one over, two over one half stitch. Extreme cross country. And this is the page that I had started when I, before I cropped it and then ripped it out. But you can still see fuzz, but once it's, um, once it's stitched over, it won't matter. So I'm not worrying about the fuzz right now. So I think I might want to work on this one because it feels kind of a little bit more fall to me because of the warm colors in it. Um, I probably won't get to any of the warm colors. I'll probably just work on 3371 um, until that color is finished, which probably won't be this rotation. So I might do that. I do want to work on my Chatelaine, but I think I might want to work on this more because I've been putting it off for a while because of Royal Holiday. So, and I haven't done full coverage in like eight or nine weeks, so. I need to get back to that. Um, next year, I'm planning to do about half of my time will be full coverage and half will be other things. So I don't want to completely lose my full coverage interest. So I'll be doing, I'll, I'll probably spend some time this week on that. And in December, I'll spend a week on Nativity, the Heaven and Earth Designs Nativity, these two. I'll do this one this week and this one at some point in December. 
and I'm still up here in the palm tree, but I'll probably get like another column done on that. Um, the other thing I was thinking of finally allowing myself to pull out this week is my diamond painting because it's fall leaves. This is the little, this is the only picture I have and it's itty bitty, but it's the little, it's just a fall leaf scene and it's finally looking like fall out here and it's November still. So I'm thinking this would be a fun time to work on it. And this is another thing that I haven't let myself get out because I'm trying, I was trying to finish Royal Holiday. So I think I'll let myself do more than one diagonal on this and I brought it here down here to show you where my starting point is so this is where I'm at now I'm working in 10 10 column diagonals so I'm here in the corner with the tree and diamond painting is where you've got these tiny little plastic resins that's that are cut with facets on them so they sparkle a little bit and the canvas is pre-printed and sticky. And so you just put the little camp, the little resins on the symbols that belong with that color. So this was a kit, just a random one. Some people, they have resins for every color of DMC. So some people have been converting like heaven and earth designs into diamond paintings, but that's, I think a little bit too much for me. Um, I don't know that I would ever have room on the walls to frame some or to, to display something like that. So I'm happy with the smaller ones, but this is cute. This is the only one I have. And I think I will try to make time for that this week as well. So if I have time to spread out on the table, I'll do some diamond painting and otherwise I'll work on a stitcher's retreat by having an earth designs and see if I can get more done on that second lady's head. That would be cool to see both of the little heads there stitching. So, um, speaking of Royal Holiday, I have not framed her yet. She is still rolled up. I hope to get to her this week because it'd be nice to hang her up when I put up all my other Christmas decorations beginning of December. So, it was just too busy last week to think about doing that. So hopefully this week I'll get to her and frame her and can show you that next week. I think that's everything. So have a good um, stitchy week and enjoy the end of your November. Happy stitching! <laughs>